Transpersonal Psychology in the Workplace, Unit 4. We are now going to be looking at transpersonal psychology qualities in the light of our places of business, employment, and personal work. How do we honor multicultural changes in our society as well as incorporate cultural diversity and contemporary consciousness development in the workplace? Some of the articles we will be reading in this unit focus on transpersonal research in our work values and organizational structures. In the book Megatrends by Patricia Aberdeen, the idea of bringing consciousness raising into our corporate structure and capitalist society is researched and discussed. Aberdeen has been a public policy fellow and corporate mentor for many years with an interest in mystical and spiritual influence in the workplace. She discusses the effects of certain transpersonal qualities, such as integrity and transparency, and higher social and environmental standards within the planning and design of corporate structures and environments. You can find her articles in the Articles folder called Megatrends 1 and Megatrends 2. She points out seven new trends to transform how we work, live, and invest. Let's just review them briefly. The power of spirituality. Spiritually minded CEOs in management, for example, Hewlett Packard and Redken. The dawn of conscious capitalism. In other words, thinking about where you're spending and investing. Leading from the middle, more emphasis on middle management level. Spirituality in business the values-driven consumer, for example, the green movement and sustainability, etc., the wave of conscious solutions, incorporating methods to improve employee growth and personal enrichment, and the socially responsible investment boom, investing in eco-friendly and altruistic businesses. In the chapter that you will be reading from the book entitled Spirituality in the Workplace, Authors Marquez, Diman, and King discuss the results of their research with companies and CEOs regarding what makes a successful transpersonal work environment. Their definition of spirituality in the workplace is broad and expansive, not necessarily associated with traditional religions, and leaving an inclusive opening to accommodate many different approaches and perspectives. Let's take a look at their definition. Spirituality in the workplace is an experience of interconnectedness among those involved in a work process, initiated by authenticity, reciprocity, and personal goodwill, engendered by a deep sense of meaning that is inherent in the organization's work and resulting in greater motivation and organizational excellence. The authors speak about certain ideas that are examples of this same definition. They include visionary work that focuses on the greater good, work that has passion and purpose, personal fulfillment of the employees, and work as a life-fulfilling activity. How do we personally develop transpersonal qualities for our workplace and or find them for our places of business as employers? Judy Neal is the author of Edgewalkers. Edgewalkers takes a close look at personality types in the workplace and how each type has a role to play in the health of the organization, business, or corporation. She emphasizes the importance of having the correct balance of the positive types and a minimum of the more negative types. Some of these psychological categories that she describes are the following. Edgewalkers, which is the primary focus of the book, they are people who build bridges between conventional and non-conventional worlds. They are creative risk takers. They are visionaries. They are also often involved with personal mystical experiences. They are unorthodox and they break new ground. The second category are flame keepers, the people who keep the original vision and values of the company alive. They understand what is best about the past and concentrate on the core values. They are open to change, but they're not necessarily the innovators. The third category are hearth tenders. They are the people who focus on the day-to-day -day work of the organization and make sure it gets done. They're focused in the present. They're moderately open to change. They're satisfied on the whole with their jobs 
and they like to keep the organization as it is. This is an important role also in the company. The fourth category are placeholders. They are people who often hold back organizational progress and innovation. They resist change. They can become a drag on the organizational energy. They have great resistance. And they're motivated by fear and ego. And finally, the fifth category are the doomsayers. They are the people who see only the negative in everything. They are generally a tremendous drag on the organization and they often become marginalized within the organization. Neil sees edgewalkers as important for the health, creativity, and innovation of a company or business. The idea of an organization or business reaching its full potential reminds us of Maslow's theories. If individuals are able to transform to their highest potential, then organizations are able to as well. Practicing conscious changes with a nod to transpersonal qualities is part of the path of growth for organizations, incorporating all the ongoing social and cultural changes occurring in our society. Here are five edgewalker qualities of being, as defined by Judy Neal. They can also be understood as transpersonal qualities that help everyone's personal development psychologically and spiritually. The author speaks about the importance of management discovering edgewalker personalities and the difficulty in trying to develop them. This is important for hiring per practices. The first one is self-awareness. Awareness of your thoughts, values and behavior and a commitment to spend time in self-reflection with the goal of becoming a better person. Second one is passion, an intense focus on your purpose or the use of your gifts in a way that adds value to your life and the world. The third is integrity, a commitment to live in alignment with your core values, to align your words and your behavior and to keep your word. The fourth is vision, the gift of being able to see what others cannot, the possibilities, the trends, the future, guidance from the spiritual world even, and the ability to take steps to make the vision a reality. And the fifth is playful, a joyful sense of fun and creativity, and an ability to keep everything in perspective. Edgewalkers are also very skillful in the following five areas. Knowing the future, risk-taking, manifesting, focusing, and connecting. You will find some similar ideas of the above qualities mentioned in the two short articles taken from the Toronto Star also found in the articles folder. They are called Sustainability and Leadership and Transcendent Leadership. Some good examples of corporate, transpersonal, transformative environments are the following. In Xerox, Honeywell, Microsoft and Motorola, you will find that they have utilized the Vision Quest experience, which comes from the shamanic native traditions, as a way of helping employees to find their own personal vision as well as a way to help the organization to clarify its vision. TELUS Corporation, TELUS Mobility Canada, and many other workplaces incorporate wellness centers with spiritually based workshops, courses such as Tai Chi, Yoga, Stress Management, Latin Dance, this is all for their employees. They encourage spiritual tools of reflection and visualization at their large corporate meetings. And many companies such as Bank of America, Body Shop, Coca-Cola and Nike, they all endorse the principles of Ceres, the Coalition for Environmentally Responsible Companies. These principles are fairly broad and they include the protection of the biosphere, conservation, safe products and services, transparency within the organization, and restoring the environment. In other words, corporate social responsibility. I'd like to consider the subject of deep ecology and by association aspects of other aligned disciplines such as eco-psychology, environmental psychology, ecotherapy, and conservation psychology. Why would I place this subject in this particular unit which is about the workplace? There have been many people who have made significant life and professional work changes directly influenced by their deep ecological concerns or as a result of their deep personal connection with nature. One such person who was mentioned in Unit 3's lecture 
is the physicist Fritjof Capra. He is one of the original contemporary scientists involved with transpersonal experience. He now directs the Center for Eco-Literacy in California. Another person is psychologist Bill Plotkin. Dr. Plotkin left a very promising career in academia and research to become an ecotherapist and wilderness guide. Dr. Plotkin is the author of Soulcraft, Crossing into the Mysteries of Nature and Psyche. You will see in the Megatrends articles that this deep nature connection plays an important role in the perspectives and decisions of some businesses and corporations. It is a question of becoming more holistically inclined in not separating our personal experience from the greater environmental and planetary one. The combination of ecology and psychology is a natural marriage. It reflects an important shift in perspective towards how we view our relationship with our natural surroundings and the health of our planet. This shift often includes transpersonal experiences. Let's look very briefly at the history of deep ecology from a contemporary perspective. I mention contemporary because our natural world has been here long before human beings have. Throughout our human history, mystics, yogis, and spiritually minded or nature-centric people have had a deep, holy connection with nature which has directed them to see the sacredness of the biological world they inhabit. This, then, is not a new concept, but in the context of contemporary life and psychological research, and the generally agreed on devastating results that our industrial revolution has had on our environment and planet, deep experiences of nature have been recontextualized with great urgency. They are now examined not only in a strictly spiritual sense, but also through the critical lens of personal and planetary development relating to consciousness and awareness. The deep ecology movement was born out of the writings and teachings of Norwegian philosopher and academic Arne Næss. Here is a quote from Stephen Harding, the coordinator of holistic science at Schumacher College in the UK, on Næss and what deep ecology is. You'll notice that in spirit, this definition is very closely allied with many of the qualities associated with transpersonal psychology. For Arne Nays, ecological science, concerned with facts and logic alone, cannot answer ethical questions about how we should live. For this we need ecological wisdom. Deep ecology seeks to develop this by focusing on deep experience, deep questioning, and deep commitment. These constitute an interconnected system. Each gives rise to and supports the other, whilst the entire system is, what Nace would call, an ecosophy, an evolving but consistent philosophy of being, thinking and acting in the world, that embodies ecological wisdom and harmony. In his article entitled Transpersonal Psychology and Ecological Conscience, which is found in your articles folder, psychologist James A. Swan writes about the importance of having quote, powerful exceptional experiences with nature that evoke strong emotional bonding. This would be an important force that would help to educate and motivate people to live and act in accord with ecological balance. Dr. Swan reminds us that, quote, the first religions were all rooted in nature. Nature and psychology in those times were closely interwoven. Dr. Swan also describes five pathways that develop an ecological conscience. Becoming well-informed, serving a sense of social justice, concern for personal and public health, seeking personal health and fitness, and profound emotional spiritual experiences. Returning to the workplace, many corporations and places of business have been greatly influenced by people who have developed personal and ecological guidelines for how they live their lives. A good example is the Irish musician Bono, who is a strong social, health, and environmental activist, influencing governmental policies in corporations worldwide. 
The person on the left-hand side of the screen is the former U.S. Vice President Al Gore. You may have heard of his film, An Inconvenient Truth. It is an expose on our current climate crisis. I encourage you to view it if you have not done so already. I'm going to close this final lecture in the course with this deep ecology phrase, deep experience, deep questioning, and deep commitment. This is a deceptively comprehensive philosophy which could also be the underlying transpersonal guidelines for individual and planetary growth in consciousness, what we have been considering in this course. The power lies in the fact that you don't need to be 6,000 kilometers from your home in some exotic locale to have a deep ecological moment. You can find an equivalent of this in your own backyard. The power lies in the present moment and the choices we make, after all. Nor does one need material wealth to appreciate a deep ecological moment. It is open to every human on the planet. Imagine what our planetary life would look like if we were all to experience some aspect of these three principles. So we've come full circle. Deep ecological principles are intimately connected with transpersonal psychological processes, experiences, and consciousness growth. For the assignments in this unit, you will share your observations and critical thoughts on your work environment and how it relates to what we are covering in this unit. Please see the assignments folder for more information.